Welcome to the second part of the Intro to Proofs video for Mathematical Induction. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. In the previous video, we saw the motivation for induction, and we saw why uh, we might want to care about induction, and we saw a proof using um, some ideas without formally proving by induction. In this video, we'll see a formal use of proof by induction. We'll start by mentioning what the proof strategy is for regular induction. We'll see uh, a bunch of varieties of this throughout this course. So to prove a statement of the form for all n in the naturals, p of n is true, you can show that p of one is true, and for all natural numbers, you have an implication p of n implies p of n plus one. That's what you need to do induction. So all of these things have various names, so let's go through those. This first part is called the base case, showing that p of one is true. Oftentimes this is fairly easy, and this is not the hard part of the proof. The second part is called the induction step, going from p of n to p of n plus one. Note here that the brackets are like this. So for all n, you have this implication. Brackets in the other way wouldn't make sense. Since you're trying to prove an implication, this p of n will be assumed, and then you'll try to show the next one. So we call this p of n the induction hypothesis, or sometimes we abbreviate it to IH. Now let's see our first example of a proof by induction, formally. For all natural numbers n, the sum from of 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. This is a very handy theorem because the thing on the left involves uh, n operations, n additions, but the thing on the left involves an addition and two, a multiplication and one division. So this is must, much faster to compute. Since this is a statement about natural numbers, we can prove it by induction. So let p of n be the statement 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. Note that p of n is the statement for this n. And our goal is to show that for all n, p of n is true. Let's proceed by induction. The first part is proving the base case. If n equals 1, then you have this equality. What's this expression on the left for n equals 1? It's this, which is 2 over 2, which is 1. And what's the left-hand side of this sum if n equals 1? It's the sum from 1 to 1, which is just 1. <laughs> so this part right here establishes p of 1. It establishes this relationship for n equals 1. Note here that each equality was justified. Right? This is justified because, well, this is what 1 plus 1 is. And this is justified because that's what 2 over 2 is. I didn't use any equalities of things I want to be true. I only used equalities of things I know to be true. Now let's move on to the induction step. So let n be a natural number and assume that p of n is true for this particular n. Not all n, just one particular stage that you're at. If you want, think about it as n equals 100, and now you're trying to prove it for n equals 101. Since we know that p of n is true for that n, we know that this sum uh, is equal to this formula. But we only know it for this n. Our goal is to prove it for the next one. So the left-hand side of what we want is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus n plus n plus 1. And we know that the sum of the first n terms can be replaced by this formula. So let's do that. So I replaced the first n terms with what it is, because we're assuming that to be true. And now from here on in, we're going to do some algebra, and we want to get this to be n plus 1 times n plus 2 over 2. So I put them under a common denominator. 
add them up together, factor out the n plus 1, and I get what I want. So this is what would happen if you replaced this with n plus 1. It would be n plus 1 and n plus 2. So looking at the chain of equalities, we have that the sum of the first n plus 1 numbers is equal to the expression we wanted to. That's p of n plus 1. And that's it. That's all our whole proof. Now, we've shown this proof in two separate steps, and I've also included a bunch of extra words and notation that is mostly meant to help you. But let's take a look at what parts of this were um, extra and what parts of this were, were absolutely necessary. So here's the whole proof in one line, or in one slide, I should say. So I've just rewritten everything. Now, some of this isn't particularly necessary. Um, the, for this particular n, for this particular n, this is mostly just to emphasize to you, because beginning students often think that uh, this means for all n. So I'm really stressing that it's just for a one n. And I also, as a guidepost for students, wrote that we want p of n plus 1 to be true. That's what we're aiming for. These three things aren't strictly necessary, so we can eliminate them and we'll still have a nice proof. The other parts are essential. So let's go through and talk about uh, some of these essential features. First off, since later in the proof we're using p of 1 and p of n plus 1 and p of n, we need to actually say what that means. So this first line is essential. You actually have to say what your notation means. Secondly, we tell the reader that we're going to use proof by induction. Sometimes people omit this and then at the end will say, therefore by the principle of mathematical induction, we approve blah, blah, blah. That's fine as well, but it's better to maybe move it up to the beginning to warn your reader that you're about to use induction. Here in these two, we blocked them off mostly to help our reader see what's going on. Um, these are not 100% essential, but it's very nice to break it up for your audience. Okay, we proved p of 1. Each equality was justified. We never wrote down something that we wanted and then um, deduced something true. Every step was justified. In the induction step, we assumed p of n was true explicitly. And every step here was uh, justified. We didn't start with what we wanted and then reduce to something that was true. Remember that when you're proving something, every step has to be justified. Um, finally, we used the induction hypothesis somewhere. So in a proof by induction, you should really use the induction hypothesis and you should tell the audience that you're using it and where you're using it. Let's take some time to reflect. How is proof by induction like knocking over a stack of dominoes? This is a common metaphor that people use. What are the essential features of induction? Why did I emphasize that the induction hypothesis is p of n for one particular n? So I underlined this a bunch and, and made a big show of it. Why, why did I spend so much time emphasizing that? All right, thank you very much and have a great day.